What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to explain all the myths, the falsehoods about land investing. We're gonna reveal what absolutely no one tells you about land investing, and I hope you can take away some golden nuggets to help you get started on your land investing journey. Now for a little bit of context, my name is Sumner Healy. I run a business called thelandpioneer.com. In the last 18 months, we've sold a little over $2.2 million of raw land on the internet. I make these videos to document my journey and hopefully help others along the way. If you guys like this content, please be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification somewhere. Let's get back into the video. Now I started my land investing journey, if you will, back in 2019. And at the time, and still today, there's a lot of urban legends and myths and falsehoods about what land investing actually is. And truthfully, I hate the term land investing because there's nothing investing like about this business. It's ultimately a business. And that brings us to point number one. This is a business, not a passive income stream, not a rental property type operation. This is a true business. I think about it like running a grocery store. I stock my shelves with land, I get the right type of land that people like, they come in, they buy it off my shelves, bada bing, bada boom. Now in some cases, people do finance the properties from us, right? And this is where this whole myth of passive income comes in. It's BS, it's baloney. There's nothing passive about it. And truthfully, passive income is kind of a farce, right? The way I look at it is it's like MRR, monthly recurring revenue. If you guys are familiar with software businesses, this is a term that you'd hear thrown around. They say, hey, we got a new customer, they pay us $200 a month, we got 10 customers this month, so we increased our MRR by $2,000 a month. Now what that means though, is you're capturing $2,000 a month right now, that customer could leave at any point. It's the same thing when we finance land. Yeah, hopefully we get paid for the next couple of years, there's a risk that person leaves tomorrow, right? We don't really bank on that income. Uh, what we look at is just how many properties are we selling per month? What's the total asset value of the properties that we have sold? And right now it's about 70, 30, right? 70% cash, 30% finance. We don't look at that as a passive income stream. You still have to manage the note. You have to help the person that's financing the property. They're gonna have loads of questions. They need directions to the property. They're gonna be late on the payments and you gotta follow up. Then you've got the risk that they just disappear like that. Now, is it nice that you can capture monthly payments? Absolutely, right? But if I could have it my way, we would sell everything for cash. You have uh, the assurance that you're getting the money immediately. There's no risk that it's gonna disappear tomorrow. And you can utilize what we call the velocity of money, right? You can take the money that you invested, get it back to you, go reinvest it, so on and so forth, so on and so forth, so on and so forth. The passive income stuff, quote unquote, is nice, but doesn't really give you that benefit of being able to go and reinvest your profits quickly. The next point is activity metrics solve all problems. When I look at any business, I always look at, you know, what's the linchpin? What are the two or three things that really drive everything else? And in the land investing space, first it's market selection. That's gonna be kind of top of funnel that everything else is gonna cascade down from. But the next point is gonna be what I call activity metrics. Now there's a ton of different ways to market for vacant land. And the most popular in this case are going to be direct mail, cold texting, cold calling. That's really about it. Now, when I first got started, a lot of people talked about, you know, send 10, 20, 30 offers per day, you know, send two or 3,000 a month. That doesn't work. Now, maybe markets have changed and things are getting more competitive, but truthfully, I think that never worked. This is a numbers game. And a lot of people don't tell you that, right? On average right now, we send anywhere between 10,000 to 20,000 direct mail pieces a month, and about 30 to 35,000 cold texts a month. That's a lot of activity, right? And with all that activity, maybe we generate four to five, maybe 10 new deals a month. 10 would be an outstanding month. What's more typical is gonna be in like that five deal per month range. And so if you're coming into this business and you're new and you're assuming, hey, I can go hand write some postcards, it's gonna be great. Look at, it might take you 90 days, 120 days, 180 days before you get a deal. And when I say this, I mean a deal that's actually worth its salt, right? Can you go out there and go market for a desert square in the middle of nowhere that you buy for 500 bucks? Yes, and you can get those deals all day long. But we're talking about a deal where you're truly buying equity, a deal where you're buying it at a discount and there's true equity built into it. It's a property worth 100, you're buying it for 50 or 60, there's equity in between that you can capture. Those deals you're not gonna get from sending out a thousand postcards a month. Sales tactics matter very little. Now, when I first got started in this business, no one really told me this, but I just kind of had this assumption with my sales background that, hey, you know what, I can come in, I'm gonna sell people. I'm gonna sell both the sellers and I'm gonna sell the buyers and my sales chops 
will take over. Truthfully, it doesn't work that way. When it comes to working with the sellers, yeah, the negotiation plays a bit of a role, but ultimately it's more about just being responsive, it's about being respectful, and it's about continuing to show up, right? We have a lot of people that reach out, they call us, we call them back, and they're so shocked that we even called them back. I wouldn't call that sales chops, I would just call that responsiveness or customer service. And this business is more aligned with customer service than it is sales. Nowhere else is this more true than when we're working with buyers. Buyers are coming to us and they're you know hesitant. I, I think I want this property, I think I want that property. I might want land in Yavapai County, I might want land in Maricopa County. They don't really know. And so I used to think that I could kind of push them, right? I'm gonna push you towards a property. It really doesn't work. What we take is what's known as a consultative approach, right? We're having a consultation with them, we're asking questions, we're being helpful, but there's really nothing that we can do to convince them to buy the property, right? We can just continue to present facts and ultimately they're gonna make a decision from there. I was so misled by this, right? I thought sales ability was gonna help me. Truly the best thing that you can do in this business to set you apart is just having great customer service. The next point is properties do not sell themselves. Boy, I wish I knew this when I first started. I would throw up a property on Facebook and just hope and pray and wait. Someone's gonna come and buy it, right? And sure, eventually someone would, but if you truly want to sell through quickly, which is one of those things in this business that is so critical, the quicker we can sell a property, the faster we can capture our money back and a little bit of profit, the quicker we can go and reinvest that and again, it comes back to that velocity of money concept. Now, lastly, what we have to understand is properties do not sell themselves. What we need to do is syndicate the listing absolutely everywhere. Any site where someone might be reasonably looking for land, the listing's going there. The next thing we need to do is put on our marketing hat. Think like a marketer, right? Build out phenomenal ad copy, put together great drone videos, put together uh, drone photos. One of the things that I like to do is we put together what's known as a property detail report, a PDR for short. Anytime someone reaches out to us from any platform, they get this PDR sent to them. And it gives them like a, a vital check on the property. All the information that they might need on the property, we include it in there, drone videos, drone photos, everything, right? So we're taking a lot of that stuff from the listing, but we know that most people, they're not gonna read the whole listing, and so we're gonna reinforce that and pass that information off to them. I think in your listing is not only do you want to tell a story and kind of capture the imaginations, you've also gotta be pragmatic and include the pertinent information about the property. If someone wants to know what the property taxes are, they should always find that in the listing. If someone wants to know, hey, what are the coordinates? They should always find that in the listing. And so it's just kind of taking this level of excellence in how you present the property that goes a really long way. And something that kind of piggybacks with this that I've found is a ton of our buyers are out of state. And so I always like to kind of put myself in the shoes of if an out of state buyer was looking at this property and they want to close on it before they can go see it, do they have absolutely everything they need to make a buying decision? Right? I want to remove all that friction. I want to remove all the potential objections due to a lack of information. I want to provide that to them. And what you'll find is just about no one is doing that in the land investing space. And a lot of people don't even educate you on how to do that in the land investing space. Now, all this to be said, I absolutely love the quote unquote land investing business. It's how I make my living. It's something that I'm deeply passionate about. I spend a lot of my waking life thinking about it. But what I've noticed is there's just a lot of baloney out there. And hopefully in this video, I kind of helped dispel some of the myths. I don't want to scare you away from land investing by any means, but hopefully this kind of sets you on the correct course so you don't waste your time spinning your wheels in the wrong direction. If you guys like this video, please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. We're dropping tons of new content every week, and a lot of it is, I would hope, is helpful for folks that are looking to start a land investing business. So if you guys resonate with this, please be sure to drop a subscribe. See you guys in the next video.